This video is brought to you by Brilliant. We have less than 60 days. <coughs> what happened with my voice? <coughs> we have less than 60 days till Christmas. And since it's the season of spooky thoughts about presents, I figure it's a great time to spice up my iPhone home screen till 2023. In this video, I'll show you my ultimate iPhone home screen holidays edition. Now, before you rush to ask me in the comments where I got this widget, don't worry. I have you covered. I have a detailed tutorial on how to build such widget yourself, which I'll link at the end of this video. And for those of you who want to grab the exact same one, which are actually two widgets, I'll also leave a link to grab it from the store and support a creator while at it. Now let's get to it. In an overview, and as always, I have only one home screen. I don't like swiping between multiple screens and I find one home page to be much more productive if it's set right. With that said, I have the widgets side page to the left and as always the app drawer on the right. I use stacks and widgets throughout the entire layout, but note that I always stay away from widget suggestions and smart rotate. As much as I like creating and using custom icons, this time I skipped them because of the red notification bubbles and the fact that I'm very used to the default icons. Besides the obvious, I also use two additional focus modes which change my layout accordingly. Also, I have hidden the search menu above the dock and I have also blended the wallpaper to hide the actual dock shape, making everything look much cleaner. I drew this wallpaper specifically for this setup and it comes in few special modifications as well as additional sizes including 8K, tablet and smartphone, but I'll tell you more about it when we get to it. On the side widget page, on the top left, I have my stats corner. This is very similar to my previous iPhone setup, which I'll link above and below if you're interested. The stats page gives me information about my sleep, my activity and the battery charges on my devices. On the right of the stats corner, the top right, I have my email clan Hey widget, which gives me a glimpse of my emails. Now, if you decide to create a similar setup, you can use this corner as your information center and stack multiple widgets on top of each other. On the second row on the left, I have my listening stack of small widgets. I have the Audible app for audiobooks, the Apple Music Player, as well as the YouTube Music widget. The fourth widget is Pocket Cast for podcasts. Next to it, I have two single Notion page widgets. My regular viewers will be very familiar with the Quick Notes page in Notion, which I use to gather all sorts of rapid ideas and things that come to mind. Below it, I have a new page that I call 60 Day Workout Challenge. This is a page that I created recently to track down my goal of working out every day until Christmas. Why? Why not? If you end up enjoying this video, subscribe, by the way. On the third row, I have three medium widgets, starting off with the weather widget, which is self-explanatory. Below that, I have my BMW widget, which I mostly use to temper my car cabin. And below it, I have a shortcuts widget with four shortcuts that some of you might be familiar with. If you're not, the first one is called AirPlay, and it's used to trigger a pop-up that asks me where I want to broadcast whatever I'm listening to. The AirPods widget forces a connection of my AirPods to the iPhone, even if the AirPods are actively connected to something else. I talk more about this specific shortcut as well as other useful shortcuts in my newsletter, which you might want to subscribe to. The bottom two shortcuts trigger on and off a focus mode called Rec or Recording. I use this mode as a do not disturb alternative, mostly when I'm recording. The interesting thing about this shortcut and focus mode is that it also adds an additional folder on my home screen, which holds all my recording apps that I might need quick access to. Again, this is something that we talked on my newsletter. So head over there after this video if you want to join. The last widget on the widgets page is the Siri Suggestions Medium widget, which changes the apps that I might want to open based on my behavior. This is useful when I switch to the sleep focus mode, which is very minimal and has no apps and perhaps is the best time to talk about. The sleep focus mode is a default mode that activates at 10.30 p.m. for me. When it turns on, my home screen changes completely, so does the wallpaper. I wanted to eliminate any distractions, so I got rid of all the apps that usually stay on the homepage. The wallpaper changes to a grayscale version to look even better in the dark, and my horoscope emerges, which is always fun to read before bedtime or in the middle of the night. 
underneath the large widget, I have my things to do widget, which is always ready to grab anything that comes to mind in regards to important tasks. Below the large widget area, I have my audiobooks audible widget and pocket casts again, but in medium format to allow me to choose more easily what I want to listen to while prepping for sleep. Now, if I scroll to the left widget page, this is where the series suggestion widget comes into play, reminding me what I might want to open in that time of the day. Now, if you're into creating shortcuts and tinkering with your device, then you are into using logic to make machines bend to your will. In that case, you'll definitely enjoy the lessons offered by Brilliant. Most recently, I tapped into their course called Algorithm Fundamentals and I loved the hands-on approach. In a fun and interactive way, it's allowed me to learn new skills and complete challenges at my own pace. Pseudocode, sorting, loops, you name it. It's like being back at college but without all the pressure and money involved. It's amazing how as little as 15 to 30 minutes a day can help you keep your mind sharp. I believe the human brain deserves lifelong learning and improvement, so it's never too late to grasp a new concept. Adding new content every month, Brilliant lets you choose from thousands of lessons from basics to advanced. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org forward slash this is e or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Now let's talk about the home screen. The main apps are nothing worth wasting your time with. If you're new here, first of all, hello. And second, I will point out that all my messaging apps stay in a folder inside the dock that allows me to glance if I have any red bubbles from any of the IM apps. Think of it as my red bubble notifications folder. The main widget is based on the app Widget Widgets and it's something that I drew and prepped recently. It's a large size widget that serves as my calendar, weather and quick access place. I wanted to create something darker and wintry while also being able to tie it to the upcoming holidays. Behind the mountains on the right I have the current outside temperature and conditions and on the left I have the date and day of the week. Of course both of those areas are tappable meaning that I can tap on the weather portion to open the weather app or tap on the dates to open the calendar. Below that I've put a countdown days section that displays the days until Christmas. It's fun and also nerve-wracking when it comes to gifts. Below the till Christmas portion, I have a small pill-shaped quick tasks bar which gives me access to my settings app as well as my files app. Before, both of them lived as separate icons on the homepage, but I find this approach much better and space-saving. The only thing to note here is that Ouija doesn't have an app link to the settings app, which forced me to create a shortcut, which in terms looks a bit clunky, but, I don't care that much because I only use the settings app when I have to deal with some boring things. For those of you who might be wondering, my camera app lives in the control center and the lock screen of course. To make things even more interesting, I have created a second version of the same widget that I placed on the home screen of my sleep focus mode, which is the one that reads the horoscope. Also, the lock screen has a separate version of the wallpaper which is darker and grayscale and looks much better with the newly introduced always on feature on the iPhone 14 Pro. Like I talked in my iPhone 14 Pro review, which I'll link below, I'm not much of a fan of the always on feature because I find it distracting, but now I keep it on because it looks much better. Both of the widgets, including all versions of the wallpaper, as well as the versions for all the devices, including 8K tablet and smartphone, are combined into a pack on my website and come bundled together. I call it the holiday edition pack and it includes everything you might need to set it up as well as a video walkthrough on how to install it. Below the large and very useful widget, I have two things to do widgets. The first one lists all my current to do's and the second one is my Christmas shopping list, which I hope will help me gather all the gifts that I will require come the end of December. If you enjoyed this video, check out my previous home screen setup for alternative layouts as well as this playlist, which I'm sure you'll find very useful. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my Sunday newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is Z, over and out.